Washington, D.C. Today on the County Seat, we're going to find out what kind of topics they talked about and what issues lie ahead. Stay tuned for the County Seat. The County Seat is brought to you this week by Jones & DeMille Engineering, helping to shape your quality of life. Find out more at jonesanddemille.com. Hello, everybody. Welcome to the County Seat. I'm your host, Chad Booth. Today, we are at the Utah State Capitol as the uh, legislators, uh, legislature is just coming to a close, and we're going to talk about a pilgrimage. It is an annual pilgrimage that has devotees from all over the country that go to it, and it takes place in Washington, D.C., and it is basically uh, an annual trek for members of the National Association of Counties who head to the nation's capital to discuss local government issues. And we're going to talk about that in our conversation today. Joining us for our conversation, Jerry Taylor, who is the uh, commissioner from Garfield County, Brandy Grace, who is the executive in charge of the Utah Association of Counties, and Sean Milne, commissioner from Tooele County. Thank you. Uh, I, and I know you're all road weary because you've just gotten back from, from uh, NACO. Uh, how different is it experience when you go to a NACO event to talk about issues with representatives than when you go, say, on your own? Well, when we're in Washington, D.C., we get a chance to meet with commissioners and executives from counties that's from all over the United States, Chad. It's not just Utah people that are there, but they're from uh, everywhere. And um, so it's a good time to get together, work together. They have a lot of the same issues and some different issues that we have to talk about there. I think it's a good opportunity for, for our officials to get together with those from across the country to talk about not only collaborate on different ideas, but also understand best practices. I think it's innovative. I think it's a, an incredible way to learn from others as well, that you just, you just wouldn't get that. Are, are the doors more open in Washington when NACO's in town? I feel so. I, I mean, with I, our I Utah would delegation. So. And, I, and I would say that our, our Utah members um, who attend that, and, and let me just also say that at this conference, we had about 45 county elected officials who participated in the conference, which I think Utah is very well represented there. But NACO does a really good job of organizing events ahead of time and encouraging Hill visits. And I would say that our members who are in DC not only participate in the NACO conferences as they're scheduled, but then also dedicate the time outside of those meetings to be on the Hill to visit with our members of Congress and also to meet with federal agencies. When, when I've gone back independently, our Utah delegation is very receptive to when a Utah County Commission shows up and says, we'd like to discuss a concern. <clears throat> but I don't know that I'd feel as welcome when I meet with representatives from our nation back in the Capitol when they're not our DC delegation. What I mean by that is I've been able to meet with different Congress uh, men and women on different topics that certainly when we get together with the Utah Association of Counties, very receptive to. But because NACO does such, such an excellent job, and Brandy couldn't uh, be more correct, they do an excellent job of uh, setting up these meetings ahead of time to talk about pension reform, jail reimbursement, the opioid crisis, uh, Medicare and jails. Uh, since I'm over public safety for my county, those are very important topics with a financial consequence. And being able to do that with other congressmen and women from outside of Utah is just as important when they have ranking membership on committees back in D.C. So I think that's very important, and NACO does a great job facilitating that. And that's probably really important for somebody like you because Garfield County is atypical, I would imagine, of a, a, a U.S. county just in the federal land issues that you have. Yeah, we have a lot, as you know, in Garfield County, we have a lot of public lands. So when we go back, uh, we're talking public lands, uh, emergency services, all kinds of things that benefit that we need help with in Garfield County. And the doors when we get back there are opening, especially when we go back with NACO. It seems like we get a lot of um, uh, open doors because NACO's there, people willing to talk to us and talk about our issues. And they're concerned about our issues, how they can help. Did you get much interaction with the uh, current administration in Washington during this conference? Absolutely. We had a really rare treat that President Trump came and gave over an hour to speak to the uh, general session. Uh, was uh, I found it personally very enlightening and 
I think you understand the president and his messaging a whole lot different, uh, differently after you have such an opportunity. But he's been great throughout his administration, too, with counties. Uh, having been a county commissioner before President Trump, I was never invited as a county official to the White House and the Eisenhower building right next door as part of the complex. And we've had that opportunity now twice. So I think we're going to take a quick break here. And uh, we come back, we're going to delve into some of the issues that our Utah delegation carried back to Washington. And uh, let's find out what the buzz is uh, back on the street in Washington, D.C. County. So we'll be right back in just a minute. Welcome back to the county seat. We're having a conversation with our colleagues from around the county as county commissioners and Representative UAC. We are talking about the recent National Association of County conference that took place in Washington, D.C. Um, you know, we, we left on an interesting topic, and I, and I think in the break you brought up something very interesting that, that uh, for those who have served across two administrations, uh, there's the focus on local government seems to be a little bit different. Is, is, can I assume that from your comments? From a county commissioner in a rural or shoulder community such as Tooele is, I, I never received a call from the White House or an email ever inviting us back to Washington, D.C. to impart upon them the importance of local issues that they don't understand 2,000 miles away. And certainly Utah would be able to say the National Monument designation played into that. But this administration has invited us twice. Twice. Um, they've had regional meetings at the White House where states get together and they've been invited to come in and they've arranged to have administrative officials there to talk about these issues that are important. And I feel like have really um, had a genuine interest in what the local leaders have to say. They've shared contact information, encouraged follow-up. It wasn't just come and be at the White House and here's an experience for you. There, there really seemed to be a genuine interest in understanding the perspective of the local community leaders and then having that dialogue and those contacts back and forth to continue the conversations. Do you get a sense that this administration rolls up their sleeves when you guys go back there? I, I do. I think that they're all about helping us and they're concerned about our concern as county officials. I think that it's Im important to them to make sure that they're reaching out to us to find out what our issues are, what we need, and how they can help us. And not just a low-level staffer to placate you for the time that you took to go back there. I mean, we're talking about a very busy day schedule with secretaries from pretty much all the major departments that will impact us at a local level. And sure, they're letting us know what they're doing, but they actually open up. They're not just so busy that they're whisked away and we don't get an opportunity for an exchange of ideas. Then we have these breakout opportunities and we get to actually let them know from our perspective. And as Brandy had mentioned, NACO as a whole brings folks together from different states where things are the same, things can be different. And what's unique about Western states is certainly different than the Midwest, which is certainly different in some cases with the Eastern Seaboard. And so being able to get that localized perspective out of 3,069 counties, boroughs, and parishes, I mean, some of that, there's going to be overlap. And then there's going to be things that are different for us. To know they'll have that dialogue is very important. So really, yeah, go ahead. Oh, I wanted to give an example. I thought that this was really um, unique when we went to the Pilt Fly-In last fall that NACO organized and bipartisan members from Utah um, organized there with other local officials from across the country. But NACO had um, set us up into groups so that we weren't just talking to the same people over and over who hear the same message over and over. And we went and met with different Congress members from other states, eastern states, who weren't as aware of PILT and the impacts to the western states that PILT has on, on our communities. And I felt like that's more, a more effective approach than what we've ever had Absolutely. in the past. Our D.C. delegation understands payment in lieu of taxes. They get it. We don't need to keep preaching the message to them when they're the minority vote. I was able to break away with one of those groups and go talk to Senator Cory Booker and his staff. And the staff members that were there had no idea what PILT was because they don't get it. They don't understand it because that's not their reality on the ground. That's the importance of NACO and its you know, ability to convene folks together from different backgrounds. That brings up an interesting topic though. We have that congressional staff briefing meeting uh, during the summer that the 11 counties put on. And since we've been doing that, I think they've done it about 18 years, but the last Last year, we brought somewhere around 15 staffers, and most of those were from across the aisle. It gives us an opportunity to show them what it is. When we talk about public lands, they have no idea. When we talk about PILT and SRS, 
<clears throat> and now they know what that is. We just went back again this year to invite several to come out here. And the ones we did talk to said, oh yeah, we've heard about last year's um, meeting and we're excited to go learn about public lands, about national parks, about SRS and PILT, and actually have boots on the ground in Utah. Excellent. We're going to take another quick break. When we come back, I want to find out about what some of the trends are that have been bubbling up in the conversation and, and some of the conversations you actually had in some of your sessions. We'll be right back on the county seat. Well, welcome back to the county seat. We are talking about the recent uh, trek to Washington for the National Association of Counties. Uh, I'm really curious about what topics bubbled up. Uh, what were your committee assignments? Where'd you guys go? Well, Sean and I actually sit on the same committee and that's the Community um, Economic and, and Workforce, workforce development. development. Yeah, so we're in the same meeting uh, for the first day back there and we worked together on that committee. What'd you learn? Well, you're always working on something to do with economic development. We talked about that, um, passed some resolutions. Work, workforce development has taken on a higher priority, it seems, the last year or so. It seems as though every economy that's doing well, and certainly Utah being you know, top of that, is challenged by its workforce, meaning we've got more jobs available than there are workers skilled to take on some of those jobs. And what's a pro and a con is the jobs are there, the con being that you need a skill set to be trained up, and that doesn't happen overnight, right? Whether, even if it's a technical um, apprenticeship, you're, you're going to maybe need less time than a four year degree. So, we've spent a lot of time in that discussing what different states are doing to try to address workforce development, and it's, it's kind of an interesting, all pressing situation. So your county is what? What's the population in Tooele County, roughly? Oh, roughly 70,000. 70,000. 5,000. How can you two guys sit on the same committee and talk about things and have the issues be the same? Or are they? Well, they're probably a little bit different. I mean, we've got a lot of housing growth that we've also spoken about. And because, again, this is community economic and workforce development. So on the community side, depending on how you do permitting, we heard that you know, roughly 40% of a house's cost might be attributable to various levels of regulation. Um, how does that impact the affordable housing crisis? Mm -hmm. And if you are growing in certain wage class of jobs, do you have the housing that goes along with it in order to support the economic development that you say you're after? And then how does that tie in with transportation? And yeah. I just wanted to mention that within NACO there are 10 standing committees mm -hmm. ranging from public lands, the, the committee that these commissioners sit on, agri-rural affairs, uh, telecommunications, a whole host of topics. And I'm proud to say that we have so many of the Utah members who are represented on that because as you can imagine, these, these meetings happen and resolutions are passed which gives NACO kind of the marching orders of how to work with federal delegation. And without the Utah voice being heard and represented in those committees, I think that we would be at a disadvantage. From a perspective of, of an association management where you rep you know, you're keeping an eye on all of the counties, does Utah's voice seem a little louder than the average? I, I would say that in some of our committees we have a reputation of being passionate yeah. about some of our issues and, and I think that that's something we can be proud of. But I would, I would also say that we are disproportionately punching above our weight. I mean out of 10 committees and you think about the 50 states and you think among those 50 states how many of them are far more populous than the three million of this state and the fact we're so well represented on these standing committees and then the subcommittees some of those have, absolutely. Like, I think that Utahns should feel proud of what a little known to the layperson state association has been able to accomplish and the commitment. We were talking about it this morning, some of us commissioners, there are some that do not have the travel budget of others and yet there are some elected officials that are probably hurtful to their own personal household that committed to participate in this. I'll use an example. Last year in the NACO newsletter, uh, a news story went out for a guy that I met a couple years ago with a training opportunity I went back to DC for for a week through NACO. A really fantastic guy, just salt of the earth. The NACO newsletter went on to describe how 
he so believed in what you know his state organization Oregon had said about NACO and how beneficial it could be to his community that even though they didn't have a travel training budget he got on a Greyhound bus and it took him Drove four days way. on a bus each direction so imagine sleeping you know, very uncomfortably crammed in there with a f bunch of folks that you don't know. I'm sure it made for some great conversation as his story went. Mm -hmm. But four days to get to Nashville where that, that uh, National Association of Counties conference took place and feel like it was worth it that the next year he did the same thing. So, Jerry, in specific, do you think you moved the needle for Garfield County uh, on, on your trip there? Well, I don't know about me moving the needle, but I can tell you Garfield County is uh, well thought of and they are a voice at uh, NACO. Also at, at UAC, we participate, we're involved. You know, they always say, um, people complain, sometimes you're going here, you're going there, why are you doing that? And I'll tell you, if you're not at the table, you're on the menu. <laughs> and so you have to be there to protect things for your county. And it's important that we're there. Sean talked about housing, how important housing is in Tooele County. Same thing for Garfield County. We need housing. So even though they're a lot bigger than we are, we deal with a lot of the same issues. Okay. Well, we're going we're gonna to take a quick break. When we come back, uh, we're going to uh, tackle some of the public land issues and some of the other committee assignments that were there. We'll be right back on the county seat. Welcome back to the county seat. We are having a conversation today about the recent uh, NACO conference in Washington, D.C. We've swapped out Brandy Grace for Jake Garfield, who is UX public lands guy, uh, to talk about some of the public lands issues. Did you feel there was a lot of momentum on public land issues, some, some gravity that developed during this conference, Jake? There's a lot of momentum. There's a lot of excitement for <clears throat> people regarding public lands issues and what this administration is doing. Uh, Secretary Bernhard, the Secretary of the Department of Interior, came and addressed the entire conference and um, addressed a lot of public lands issues. So there's a lot happening that, and uh, that's definitely a priority for the public lands group, but but NACO as a whole, I think. Uh, what what's in the sights of of this administration that it, it affects public lands? The biggest thing in my mind is the reform of the NEPA process that has been proposed by the uh, Council on Environmental Quality. Um, the Trump administration wants to streamline the NEPA process, streamline the environmental analysis projects for project infrastructure projects and projects on federal lands. Um, they propose things that would strengthen the role of local governments and um, really shorten the time it takes to do an environmental analysis. And that would really um, bring a lot of benefits to, to counties, to states, to um, anyone needing to get something done in the public lands world. Jerry, you're a county that, that NEPA can just strangle. How, how do these kinds of proposals uh, sit with a place like Garfield County? How much would your landscape be changed if they could streamline 50 percent of the process out of NEPA? It's exciting for us to think that they could do that to shorten the time to look at these projects and to help us out. Uh, it's a big deal for us. Of course, you know Garfield County, we're 93% uh, public land, uh, federally owned, 3% state, which leaves us 3% private. So it's a big deal for us. Is NEPA something that affects Tooele County as well? We've got, you know, the Great Salt Lake and we've got this growing population. So anytime that you're having to deal with an EIS or environmental impact statement uh, and the, the federal you know, requirements that you have for any time you're building an infrastructure like we are right now with the Mid-Valley Highway that's coming off of Interstate 80 and into the population center of Tooele Valley. These are a concern. When the president got up during the general session, president of the United States, and mentioned how he's trying to create a scenario whereby it takes it from 10 years down to two, and then ultimately he said he even wanted to take it down to one, that's a great deal for us, particularly because you may be invested at this point into a 10-year program for these kind of regulations, only to find out the answer is ultimately no. So I'd rather know that the answer is a negative, not going to happen within two, and be able to move on with the limited tax dollars that we have and the limited time we have when we're elected to four-year terms than to go maybe across several different mix of county commissioners. So yeah, government regulation is a huge concern for, uh, I think, pretty much every county in the state. Did they discuss uh, waters of the U.S. at all? They did. In fact, when the president addressed <laughs> N the NACO conference, he brought it up that the, um, there's now a new rule on waters of the United States that um, makes it much less uh, stringent. There's far fewer waters 
that will be included under that rule than were previously included under the Obama administration. That will really um, reduce the regulatory burden uh, imposed on rural areas. Do you feel that the previous waters was a little bit of a stretch? I do feel it was a stretch. There was, um, there were situations where, depending on how it was interpreted, it can include ditches and irrigated far cropland and all sorts of places where there's water, but it's um, not really, it's not the type of water that Congress intended to be um, protected under the Clean Water Act. It, I think it went way too far and it just um, created more more work, more red tape that farmers and and other members of our communities had to deal with and that a lot of that should be going away now. Final thoughts you guys, uh, anything that that uh, that came up or did, give, rate, give me a grade, give me a grade on this conference. I'd say A without a doubt um, from professional development and the investment of taxpayer dollars among Utah counties to have their elected officials go back to Washington DC to affect meaningfully affect policy that makes a difference to our taxpayers, absolutely an A. What would be your I'd grade? say an A as well. I think it just, this conference showed how closely this administration wants to work with local governments, something that really hasn't happened like it should have in the past. And to have the president and uh, Secretary Ben Carson and other people um, from the government there meeting with county commissioners, just or county representatives is the most important thing, I think. Your scorecard. I would have to give it an A or an, even an A plus because uh, the things that you can get done at NACO, plus being back in D.C., a lot of doors are open. You can meet with uh, a lot of the government officials. Excellent. Gentlemen, thank you for your time. Thank you also to Brandy Grace, who took time out of a really busy schedule to join us for part of this show. Remember, local government is where your life happens. Be engaged, be involved, be part of the solution and uh, share this conversation with your friends. It's really important that we get the word out about these episodes of County Seat to as many people as possible. Best way you can do that is to like us on our different social medias, follow us and share it with your friends, and we'll look for you next week on the County Seat. Thank you for watching The County Seat. Be sure to subscribe and turn on your notifications to keep up to date on the program and happenings around Utah.